Hello, I'm Michelle Tapper with the latest from science. Conserving our precious koalas and Great Barrier Reef is a difficult job for scientists. Understanding the problems and identifying them requires complex data management and analysis. Here to tell us more about the new technologies being used is Academy Fellow Professor Kerry Mengerson, a statistician from the Queensland University of Technology. Hi Kerry, thanks for joining us. Ah, thank you for having me. Some people might be surprised to learn that mathematicians are involved in conservation. How do you use statistics to help predict population numbers? Uh, thanks for that question. So statisticians and mathematicians are involved in a very wide range of areas. When you have the skills in maths and stats, you can work across health and industry and conservation. And in conservation, for example, we bring mathematical models which describe the behaviour of animals and then the way that they live in their environment and where they might live. And so we bring together these mathematical models and we bring together the data and we can then describe the way that these animals live, the factors that in, uh, impact on their habitat and how they move through the environment. And then also the kind of environmental factors, the human factors, the uh, global change factors that will affect their conservation into the future. Monitoring koala populations and helping protect their habitats is obviously vital to helping conserve the species. How do you use drones and virtual reality to do that? The typical kind of data that we have from conservationists and ecologists will be going out into the field and observing the animals. But that's often very difficult. So you think of koalas in the, the, the previous um, recent times when we've had these terrible bushfires. And so we can't particularly go into those areas or the animals might be cryptic in other words, they hide from view, so trying to see koalas in the forest, or they might be in areas which are really inaccessible for people to get to. So instead, we can use other forms of data to help us to understand where these animals live and how many there are. And the kinds of data that we can use are drones, so we can fly over the area and we can either take photos or we can take thermal images to see their heat signals and understand where they are. And we can use virtual reality. So if we take images of the areas where these animals might live, and then we can make immersive environments and we can include experts in those immersive environments and ask them, what are the characteristics of this environment that make it useful for the animal to live in? And then we can take those characteristics and we can understand where those characteristics or those pockets of environment might be across the landscape. And that's where we can predict where the koalas might be. So we use the drones for the wide imaging area and we use the virtual reality to get extra information and we combine that with our observations to understand better about predicting where the animals might be and how many there might be. So you gather all this information and all of this data. How do those findings then help in the conservation of koalas and inform decision making? We can use the data that we're collecting from these different sources to create an evidence base. And that evidence base then can be used by policy managers and uh, by conservationists to make better decisions. So we want to be able to use our statistics and our mathematics to promote better evidence-based decision making. You're also involved in projects that help monitor the Great Barrier Reef. How on earth do you collect data from something that is so huge? Uh, good question. So the Great Barrier Reef is like 2,300 kilometres long. It's huge. And there are areas of the reef that have been monitored for a long time very consistently by uh, underwater divers taking images and taking measurements. But they're just pockets along the reef. And so we asked the question, well, how do we learn about the rest of the reef um, in those gaps where we don't have that kind of information? Well, we've got a number of ways we can do that. We can use aerial imagery, so flying over the reef, but we can also use information from divers. And so we think about that any number of divers that are out there on the reef taking underwater imagery 
And also we have underwater uh, submarines that go along and take photos as well. So we can use those images and imagine if we had this virtual reef online and you could take the images and you could geotag them to the reef. And then you can get automatic uh, image analysis to identify features of those images like coral cover or fish. And you can use citizens, other people, to go into those images as well and annotate where the coral is. And in doing that, we can extract the information from those images, combine it with these long-term monitoring sites, and come up with a much better description or model of the health of the reef. I'm glad you brought that up because you're also involved in the Virtual Reef Diver project, which does use citizen science. So how do you utilize that data? Citizen science is a really important area in growing in popularity and, and uh, many areas of science are using this kind of information from people. On the Virtual Reef Diver project, we're using citizen science in two ways. The first is to collect the images from divers who are uh, taking photos underwater. And the other is to, to ask people to go into the images and identify where there is coral, fish, algae, and so on. By doing that then, we're getting the images from the citizens, we're getting the information about the images from other citizens, we're putting that together with the, the scientific data, and then we can create these much better predictions of the health of the reef. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? And if somebody wants to get involved in a citizen science project, is it as easy as just getting online? Absolutely. So you can go to the Virtual Reef Diver site. You can just Google Virtual Reef Diver. There's also many other ways of getting involved in citizen science. So there's an Australian Citizen Science Association. And what we can do then is we get that information from the citizens and, as we said, combine it with other uh, data sources from drones, from underwater images, from acoustics, from microphone data. We can then, we, but what we do is not only just get the data, but we need to then analyze it. And that's where the statistics comes in to be able to take those data, we make, uh, extract the information from that, and then we can develop mathematical and statistical models that describe the system in a way that we can understand the important factors of those systems and also be able to make predictions about those systems into the future. And that's so important for conservation where we have rare and threatened animals, where we have areas that we can't actually access and we want to be able to predict into the future where we don't know what it will be like but with our mathematical and statistical models, we can make good predictions of what those uh, the future might look like for these important animals that are so important for Australia. Now, it's not just conservation that you use statistics and mathematical modelling for. You're also involved in Australia's Cancer Atlas. Can you explain how that works? The Australian Cancer Atlas is one of the world's first interactive online atlases. And again, we take our statistical models, our spatial models, and we look at different cancers across Australia, and we can show the incidence and the uh, survival rates for different areas across Australia for 20 different cancers. So you can go online, search for the Australian Cancer Atlas, be able to zoom in to the area where you live and see the rates of cancer that are associated with your area and how that then compares to the Australian rate. So is it above the Australian rate, below the Australian rate? How, with, with a kind of probability or how sure are we that it's really above or below those rates? And this is really important for policy makers and uh, health managers, just the same way that it's important for conservation managers and, uh, and policy ma makers in the area of ecology. And so although these are two very different areas, the mathematics and statistics that we use are very similar. And so maths and stats really are tools that we can use in very many different areas to solve really important problems of our world. That's a lot of really interesting information and obviously it's of great benefit to many people. Professor Kerry Mangerson, thanks for your time. 
Thank you. And don't forget, for regular video updates from the Australian Academy of Science, make sure to follow us on social media. I'm Michelle Tapper. See you soon. Mm -hmm.